Hey there, boys and girls of the YouTube world. Today, Duff Dog and I are going to see if we can't get a 1960 Chevrolet Impala running. Shooting this inside, big blue here, because the wind is blowing about Mach 9 today. You know why it's so windy in the Dakotas? Because Montana sucks and Minnesota blows. Wait, is it the other way around? Yeah, Montana blows and Minnesota sucks. Anywho, we're going to jump out of the pickup here. It's cold and it's windy, and we're going to get this thing loaded up and get her back to town. You ready to do this? All right. What else we got back here? Minneapolis Moline. Oh, Puddin's the king of those. Boom tube Brian, he'd dig that two cylinder John Deere with four rear tires. Gotta dig this green. We're missing some uh, trim on the side here. A couple of whiskey dents. Pretty good whiskey dent up here. Post car, six cylinder, three speed on the column. Front ends, well, nice other than that whiskey dent. This fender seems good. It's kind of down in a hole. Trim is over here yet. Oh, look at that. A DeWalt 3 8 corded drill. Our lucky day. Oh, look at, oh, the trim is in there. Some of it anyway. When was this thing on the road last? I don't think it was that long ago. For us anyway. 04. Only 17 years. Psh, nothing. We could probably drive this home. Then how would I get here? What happens when you break down on the road? Trim's all there, kind of dinged up over on that. Can't call them fins, they're wings. All right. Let's do this at home, out of the wind, so your sound quality is better. So I'm not freezing. <laughs> So close, Duff. Better than the winch is going dead. I think we'll get it. We got the booster back hooked up. Oh, well, we got her on. Hopefully, we got enough tongue weight. Usually, I like to load them the other way, but four rear wheel John Deere's is in the way. Let's get her tied down and make like geese. And get the flock out of here. All right, Duff? He swears there's something in there. Ah, never mind that that wheel's two thirds of the way on. Can't really go anywhere because the fender's gonna stop it. What do you got, Duff? Something run out of there? Is it under my trailer now? Hopefully whatever it is doesn't come in the shop with us. Well, we made her home. Let's throw some wheels on it so that she rolls a little bit better. Maybe? What do you say? I'll leave it sit outside and hopefully whatever's in there goes and runs over there and not in the shop. Well, we got this thing rolled in. Didn't really have too much for incidents other than it got really close to the Jeepster. No damage, these bumpers are good back then. And uh, yeah, swapped a couple tires, had to tube a couple. You know, the fun stuff, right Duff? You just wanna go for a ride. What are you doing under there? He swears there's a critter underneath that thing. 
Let's take a look. Let's see what we got. We sniffing out that glass pack. Oh yeah. Or the floor pans. Oh, they're there. Kind of soft. Couple holes in that support. Ooh, that support's highly vented. What are you getting after? Oh man. That's carpet back there. Look at how beat this rear floor pan is. This thing's done some Dukes of Hazard stuff. Yeehaw! Got her double hung. Isn't that a window terminology? For the exhaust there, two clamps, two hangers. All the horsepower, the 235. Looks like the floor pan on the passenger side is just as whammied up. What was living under there? This is the most interest that I've ever seen you on the outside of a vehicle. So, floor pans, I mean, not as nice as I was hoping for, but not terrible either. Rockers are way good. Super good. A little bit of rot in the lower quarter. And then of course, back here in the trunk section, they always got it. This hanger's busted. Oh, don't worry. Quick Dick McDick would be proud. Little number nine wire fixing the tailpipe. This is Quick Dick McDick reminding you, a man will never get tired of pulling on his number nine wire. I think those are the original shocks. Nope, they're Monroe Maddox. Anything else? Yep, front of the fuel tanks all beat to crap. This thing had an off-road life. A couple of holes in the floor pan. The frame is super solid. I have a classic car, Ryan's always asking how the frames are. We don't ever have rot in the frames of these cars up here. Yeah, whew. Floor pan, she's soft. Missing the lower valance here. This side's all beat up. Those are like the first things to go. I think the shocks get all sagged out and then the back end drags. That's your lowest point, gets torn off. I think we're missing a piece of trim right here. Yep. Yeah, the tail lights are in it, so that's better than our last 60. All right, I'm gonna get putting wheels on it and uh, get her on the ground. It, there's no critter, huh? You want me to open the door, don't you? Just chomping at the bit. He's like, open it up. The suspense is killing me. What is it? It's at a state park. Oh, vehicle inspection, 1978, South Dakota. I got these wheels on. You check out what's going on in there. Oh, bale and twine? Heck yeah. What is that? Hold on. Hold the hold the gosh dang phone. Ugh. Freaking door. Duff, go in there and put your shoulder into it. Kick this open. Get the old pudding hammer trick. Ugh. All right, let's get out of there. Come on. Get the wheel on it, and we'll see what happens. Well, should we finally uh, address this thing? No, not undress it, address it, Duff. Big whiskey dent here. Uh, we could probably take it off and get the old uh, English stump out and get a little bit better, but it's creased pretty hard right on the body line, and then of course, Right over the headlight too, right, Duff? But I think you could get it a lot better because it's a pretty solid fender. Get into the rockers a little bit. Like I said, it's usually the passenger side all whammied up. And then it kind of went along here and kind of waved that up a bit. And I think the big spear that goes right here is in there. And this is called Tasco Turquoise, like Tabasco, but totally a different color. Tasco turquoise. I like it. I'd like it a lot. I like it a lot. Yeah, a little whammied up in the corner there. This trim piece is pretty chewy, but she slid over a bit. Missing that one in the middle here. Oh, did we see if we got any keys? Oh, I can't see them from here. I'm sure there's some good stuff in here, like the two hubcaps we're missing. Jake from State Farm. I think he was a State Farm member. What are you wearing, Jake from State Farm? Uh khakis. I think that's what those three circles mean. Right, though? Quarters are rusty. 
Duff just loves this car. Absolutely. You want me to open the door for you, don't you? I don't know what his deal is, but he's pretty excited about it. Only got one mirror on the outside and uh, seven years bad luck there. This fender's good. This whole side's good. Looks like the front clip was painted once. See how it's like 42 shades off? Also, I'm guessing the windshield leak. He was a fan of the old tub and tile. A lot of sealing going on up there. Missing a wiper. Well, the arm and everything. Scratch the windshield. It's cracked. No big deal. Paintbrush. Folding yardstick. Grandpa's medicine bottle. You, uh, you fellas been doing a bit of boozing, have you? Sucking back on Grandpa's old cough medicine? Looks like some fuses there. More Grandpa's medicine. Ooh, wood handle screwdriver. Score. Some 516s lag screws. Hopefully a used set of points. Duff. Open the hood. The front end's pretty straight. You're getting pretty good at that. Hood insulation's coming down. Oil bath air cleaner, 235. Coils there, plug wires there. No flexi hoses. Starters there. Does it have oil in it? Oh, I'm guessing they had a uh, plugged up rusty fuel line. Oh, dipstick, Jimmy. It's got oil on it. Does it turn? It's probably in gear. Oh, these GMs, they just, and it is in gear. We could run ourselves over just like we did with the Bronco. Well, is it in gear? I don't think so. Just kidding, it's in gear. No power steering, no power brakes, which is really quite odd to have those on a uh, base model six owner like this. Radiator held in with some number nine wire. Coolant, uh, I mean, it's moist in there, so good enough. The old canister type oil filter. Oh, is that a new choke cable? Dang. Dang. Rusty old master cylinder. Here's the uh, kick down switch for the overdrive. Basically it kicks it out of overdrive and into drive when you mash it and you got it in overdrive. Where's the overdrive solenoid relay thinger at, Duff? You're just getting right in there. I can't see it. So I forget what these transmissions are called. Is it like Borg Warner R10 or Saginaw R10 or something? Anyway, I think when you get these things up to 27 miles an hour, there's a governor in there. And that governor sends a signal to a relay, which is usually on the firewall. And that relay, relay in turn sends a signal down to a shift solenoid on the transmission and it kicks it in to overdrive. So obviously you're not gonna hit 27 mile an hour in first gear, but you can go into overdrive in second gear and then you got also got overdrive in third gear. So technically, um, like my white lightning, I got the same transmission and I bypassed the relay and the governor. So I just have a switch under the dash that flips that solenoid on. So I have overdrive technically in first, second, third. So technically it's a six speed. Yeah, that's right. Not many guys got a six on the tree in their 62 Chevy pickup, but Duff Dog and I do. Uh, pretty neat transmissions. I forget what overdrive is, like 070 or something like that. That seems a bit excessive. But uh, in factory form, um, like I said, it's 24 mile an hour. So usually you're in third gear by then, but sometimes you could be in second gear if you're really just giving her all the beans in second gear. The other thing is, if you don't have the overdrive engaged, these transmissions freewheel. So like if you come into town and you let off and it's not in overdrive, it'll free spool. So it'll like coast, like the engine won't lug it down if you're used to driving a manual transmission. So it's kind of a weird feeling. But when the overdrive is engaged, it does not freewheel. So like when you slow down from 65 mile an hour or anything over 27 mile an hour and your overdrive is engaged, it's gonna slow down at the engine speed. There is a lever underneath the dash that says overdrive. That is the overdrive disengaged. Basically that just pushes a lever arm. It's a cable that pulls a lever arm on the transmission which basically overrides the uh, solenoid down below in the transmission. So if you're pulling a trailer, you're going up hills or whatever and you just don't want it in overdrive, you can do that. And the other thing is, if it's in overdrive, 
it will not roll backwards. So you're thinking, well, you got to be doing 24 miles an hour to be in overdrive. Not on my white pickup. If you flip that switch, you can switch at a, flip that switch at an idle. So like if I park on a hill, hit the brakes, stop, put it in neutral, and I flip that switch over so that cylinder engages, it will not roll backwards. So it's kind of a neat park and brake for when I park on a hill because, you know, I cut the park brake cables on everything. I can leave that thing running in the morning and warm it up, and it won't roll backwards down the driveway. The more you know. Did I just bore you to death? Literally with my overdrive speech. You don't want to mess with the engine? Yeah, it's loose and it's got oil and it's moist in the radiator. I don't know why some people don't like that word. Moist. Moist. Let's uh, check the inside out. Hopefully it's not moist in there. You really want me to open that door, don't you? Oh, I think I'll just jump in this car all by myself. I bet if I just barely open that door far enough so he can get in, he'll do it. We gotta see what's in here. And uh, that door doesn't open. I'm sure neither of these will open, right? Well, that one's locked. Hey, good sir. If you could uh, hit that lock button while you're in there and unlock it, that'd be great. Oh, it had seat covers on it. Ain't much left of it. So of course that's gonna happen. Well, I'm gonna go flip that and see if she opens up. Oh. Nice. You mean to tell me those were just locked? Maybe not this one. What's oh, back here? Bailing twine. Hit me up if you need some of that. We got enough for several bales. What's this? Oh, that's the trim off the seat, ain't it? Yeah, I think it's that piece for the other side. Right? Is that a very large dead animal? Or is that just a stick? Is that what you wanted? Was the animal? I need to get this door open. Oh, for cheese and rice. Guess we're not getting that door open. What is in here that you're so excited about? What's this, a hot dog cooker? Oh, they got the keys to the, oh. Whew. Thought they had it to the lock position. That's not good. It's got the straight line tuning factory radio, factory clock option. When was the oil change last? Can't read it. It was done at a Phillips 66 though. There's a sweet choke cable. I wonder if this works for its chassis glow lights. What are you getting after down there? Spare coil? What's underneath there? Oh, 22 shells are empty. Glove box, surely full of mice. Nope, it already fell out. You are just on a mission. They're not gonna catch us. We're on a mission from God. To evict some type of creature. Oh, the Cosby sauce is empty. Choke return spring. You can tell this guy is definitely a farmer. Oh, razor blade for cutting the Hoover sheath. Didn't we find one of those in the last 59? Just all kinds of mystery. Screws and bulbs and staples, and Phillips screwdriver bits. If there's any cool advertising on this. Jimmy, this could be your new dipstick. It's pretty neat right there. That's pretty neat. Well, I was hoping it'd have like a business advertisement on it. Nope. Just a folding yardstick. Was there no tape measures back then? Why did everybody use a yardstick? So did you find that smell yet? Maybe it's in the back seat. Maybe it's in the headliner. Ugh. All right. Let's go see what's in the back. Wish we had some keys to get the trunk open. Probably all kinds of good stuff in there. Oh no. The Easter Bunny. 
Had a rough year. Just that trim. AM radio. Part of a square. What? Oh, it's so bad in here. The 98 tags. Shower head tub adapter thinger. Don't store stuffed animals in your old car. Whew, bunch of oil. Frick no, empty jugs. Empty, empty, empty. Oh, what a disaster this thing is. Whew, that's a good file. Dang, that's a monster. What is in here, Duff? Go find it. Some pump manual. Pennzoil snowmobile oil, still full. Well, it's got something in it. It's not that old because it's plastic. Well, I mean, it's old, but it's not metal. I don't know. I want to see what's in the trunk. It's so bad back there. He doesn't even really want to go back there. Are they a smoker? Nope. Gum wrapper, trident. So it looks like in the trunk, there's a spare tire and wheel a random spare tire, an axe handle, maybe some orange flags for doing road construction. Nothing that great. Nothing I really want to rip that back seat out for at this time. But I might see if I can give the ols. Aww. Donkey kick. And get that door open. Maybe. I don't know. Wish me luck. This thing is... <sighs> it's not as gross as that 67, but there's just so much stuff. So much stuff, Duff. I think they're all the window down. Remember when windows went all the way down? Kids weren't tempted to jump out. Oh. The door is really upsetting me. All right. Car's gonna be just fine without that back door open. I, I give up for now anyway. Let's put a battery in it, see if it'll turn over. Well, we know it turns over, but see if it turns over with the key. And we got power at the uh, coil and such. Before we do that, let's disconnect that fuel line. Oh, how convenient, I have a pliers. Oh, it's a nap of gold. You know it's good. Thank Florida Man Dave for being our battery sponsor this week. Should we clean those up? No. Well, magic smoke didn't escape, so I'm gonna go tap the key. Before I do that, I'm gonna take it out of gear. Brilliant. Brilliant! <laughs> well, it turns over. I'm gonna get the loser switch and a jumper wire, and we're gonna see if we got some spark coming out of the coilage. I bet we don't even have to clean the points on this one. Oh, who am I kidding? You know we're gonna have to clean the points. The Mortsky Flick. These 235s are so good. Starter's easy to get at. Distributor's right here. Doesn't require any tools to take a cap off. As I can't get it off with my thumb. There we go. Looks surprisingly good inside of that cap. Everything for that matter. Maybe we'll just leave that on there for now. Just kidding, we're taking it off. Maybe not. I haven't made up my mind yet. I don't want to break that rotor spinning around, so we'll leave it on there. So now instead of using the key, we're just gonna run a jumper wire. That way uh, I don't have to go back and forth and forget about leaving the key on. Red wire goes to the distributor. This side, we got the green wire coming off of our solenoid. So you get 12 volts at cranking. Otherwise, this wire usually has like 8 to 10 volts to it. We're going to give her a full 12. Now, we unhook our coil wire. Oh, a nice shiny spot on our valve cover. Dead battery? Probably. 
Shout out to the guy in Bowman, North Dakota that sent me a screwdriver. Oh, it says case on it. It's not even a uh, channel lock like my other one. It's just rebranded case. Perfect. But yeah. Thanks for sending me the screwdriver that I've been missing forever. I promise I won't lose this one for like another 15 years. Is our distributor spinning? That's gonna be a problem. So that I could hear some squeaking in here, you know, those valve train or the fan or something. The rotor ain't turning. I'm guessing that's why they parked it. So I don't know what that runs off of. I'm guessing a gear on the camshaft. So I suppose the camshaft could be broken. We're gonna take that distributor out and see. Before I do that. We're going to get all these wires out of the way. So I'm going to mark where number one is at. 15 is too young, 36 too old, 24 is just right. So we don't lose where number one is at. You know what I'm saying. We could probably unhook this coil wire, seeing as how we don't have a distributor that turns. What holds this guy in there? Now normally you would want to mark where the distributor is pointing before you take it out, but since this one ain't turning, it's uh, not going to really matter. We're going to have to find top dead center when we put it back in. Jimmy, the dipstick tube is right in the way on this. Why did you put it right there? All right. So here's the other concerning thing. I can't turn the shaft. So I thought maybe the gear was stripped down there, fell off. Oh, it could be the timing chain maybe. Hmm. Can we see any of the rocker arms up here? I'm gonna turn the engine over and see if those rockers go up and down. That'll tell us if the camshaft's moving, right? Oh, that's right. These have a timing gear on the front of the engine. I don't know if you guys could see that, but the rocker arm is going up and down. So the camshaft's turning. So why isn't our distributor turning? We gotta figure out how to get that out of there. There we go. Don't ask me what I did. I'm gonna take that vacuum line off. Dope. Dope! Oh, dope! All right, what's it gonna be? Rut row spaghetti -o. Uh oh, spaghetti -o. So, the camshaft drives this gear here, and which turns the shaft, which turns your rotor, and the bottom of the shaft turns your oil pump. Um, so obviously this thing wasn't pumping any oil, but at the same time it wasn't really turning over much. And I think the distributor just locked up internally. Oh, no. Something must have caused that to uh, stop abruptly. What is it? It sounds awful growly in there. Now I guess we gotta go see if we can find a 235 distributor. I suppose we could put a new gear on it, but it's probably because there's an oil cap here for oil in this thing, and uh, I'm guessing it never got oiled. Do you ever oil your distributor? Because you should. Watch, it'll be just packed full of grease. And it is. Hmm. Also, I noticed that uh, it was like wedged up tight against the side cover here, the inspection cover for the uh, push rods and lifters and such. So I think when this locked up, it spun it clockwise, obviously, because it turns clockwise, because only Ford would have it spin the wrong way. And it bashed into that cover and put a dent in it. So yeah, I'm guessing this thing, uh, she seized up. Yeah, she's really tight right in there. 
You can hear it. Oh man, and then it stops. So, what are the odds I got a 235 distributor laying around? And where did those teeth go? If it was South Dakota, I know where those teeth went. I'm on meth. All right, I'm gonna go look for a distributor. Wish me luck. Well, I wasn't able to find a distributor in my collection. And that got me to thinking, did that tooth get screwed up on there? Sure enough, that cam gear is chewed up. It's just one tooth. Oh, can you guys see that uh, shiny sheared off tooth? So I don't know if it's worth risking sticking another one in there and ruining another perfectly good distributor. Oh, I can see some teeth though. Let's see if I can fish them out. Don't drop. There's a couple of our suspect teeth. I think it might run okay without it. It doesn't need that tooth. There's a lot of people running around that are missing a tooth. Worst case scenario, we just shell at another perfectly good distributor. Like I said, I don't have a distributor that's loose, but I do have several vehicles with 235 engines in them that uh, I guess we're gonna have to steal a distributor out of. But it's cold and it's windy and it's dark, so I'm not really excited about it. Especially if we shell this one out. But, we're gonna do it anyway, just for you guys, because I like you. Any ideas which we should grab, Duff? Here is a 61 engine, 62 being the last year of the 235. We're working on a 60, so I figure the distributors should be pretty close. They did make a couple of different ones. This is another car we're gonna do a video on someday, but you guys are just gonna have to hold off on that one while I uh, pull this distributor out. Hopefully this one We'll get a distributor back someday, or I guess we'll have to find another distributor. Hey, the starter's there, that's good. Carburetor, this one doesn't look near as nice as the 60. So I don't feel bad robbing parts. And we're missing a little radiator hose. And it's got a flexi hose. And the heater hose are off. You'll see more on this one later. Oh, weird, the coil's gone. Imagine that. Freaking everybody and their dog stealing freaking coils. Oh, well, we broke the clips for the distributor hold down, so we'll have to fix those. Oh, there's the coil. It just somehow got wedged down between the engine mount and the control arm. How does that even happen? It's not our problem right now. Trace it pointing that way. Remember when we put the 62 back together, it's pointing at the rear control arm bolt. Yeah, that looks the same. Should probably put a rag in there, but we won't. Well, let's go stab this thing in. Man, the other one looked a lot better. Who needs a 62 Impala station wagon? Hit us up if you do. Here's our Toothless Wonder, here's our new one. The Vacuum Advance on these is basically just a diaphragm with a lever and it clamps on the distributor and the entire distributor rotates. It's kind of a phenomenon if we get this thing running, show it to you. Really weird. Have we showed him one of those yet before? Like I was saying, 62 is the last year of the 235. Not sure the first year, but I believe 54 was the first year of the full pressure oiling system, unless you had a power glide car which I think came out in 51. Uh, anyway, when this thing locked up, it looks like it spun the whole shaft, but it didn't allow the vacuum advance canister to spin, so that's why that's rotated differently. But other than that, it's got the same grease cup, and we're gonna have to swap these clips. Looks like the same clamp there. This one looks altogether better externally than this one, but Kind of wish we could take this one apart and swap it, and we can, but we gotta grind that off. I think we're gonna take this apart anyway, just see what's inside. But I'm gonna clean this one up a little bit. Maybe, I don't know. It looks, uh, it sucks. Well, we could just pop this gear out and put it on this one, but we know this one doesn't rotate very well. So, there you go. 
more useless 235 information and uh, see what we got going on here. Looks like these clips are just screwed on, so that'll be nice. Well, as you can see, we got this distributor all blown apart. There's way more grease in that cup, and I put new grease in there. I think what you do, and this is just me, I think you pack them full of grease, and then you just tighten it up, you know, every oil change, give this thing a couple of tweaks, you know, it's kind of got some serration on it, so you tighten her up, and uh, see how it's tapered to push grease in there. This one looks a lot better in the grease cup than this one. I mean, there's grease in there, but I feel like it's not in the right spot. Oh, looks like something threaded in and hit the shaft. So how I got this thing apart, where is the gear at? So we took this pin here and we just ground the head off the one side. So really, we could put it back together, probably just weld that pin in or get a new pin and stake it in there. Maybe a roll pin would work. Roll pin's what like a small block Chevy has. Not this staked in kind. It did have USA made points. So maybe we'll swap those into that one. This is the vacuum advance collar. Basically just took that screw loose, spun that off. Like I said, swap those bail clips because the very ends of them were busted. It's supposed to look like that. And then we had to take this, I don't know, what's the power for the points. Get this rubber isolator on it so it don't ground out through the body. And that's about it to get it apart. But, looks like that's a mechanical advance spring. I'm guessing this bottom plate has a mechanical advance built into it, maybe? Something? I don't know. What is it? I've never really had one of these apart. Here's your top plate or bottom plate, whatever you want to call it. So it basically holds your points in your condenser. This is your main shaft. Gear drives that, drives your oil pump. And you can see, I can hold the bottom of the shaft and move the top of the shaft. That's all your mechanical advance. And there's our one spring that's missing. Nothing too concerning there. I think it's supposed to run on that grease. I don't know. And then I'm guessing oil is supposed to either wick its way up or down, judging by those grooves there. I'm guessing you'd want it to go up. I'm not sure what these grooves are for. Well, that's where your grease sits when you uh, push grease in there. Did have a little in it. So you could probably clean this thing up, put a new gear on it, put a new spring. Oh, what is that set screw? Hold the show. I was going to say, you could just put a new set screw in it, grease it up, and a new gear, and this thing might be okay. It might have not been lack of grease that caused it. It might have been this screw head that I have no idea where it come from. Because you know how it was like, it would turn fine 300 degrees, but that last 60 degrees she was grinding? I'm guessing that screw head got in there. And or this spring. So we're not going to throw this away, because we could fix it. Problem is, we need to find another distributor for a gear in the spring. So we basically have to sacrifice another distributor to make one work, but we could find one in the scrap pile, probably. So I was gonna say, you know, what we learn from this? Grease your distributor, but actually, we need to find out where that screw come from. Anything on the bottom of the plate here? Where's the screw that holds, oh! There it is. This is the screw that he had holding his points in. He used way too long a screw to hold the points. And that got in his mechanical advance, and that is why this car is parked. Look at that. This is like forensics. Except for nobody's dead yet. Well, this car is, but we're gonna bring it back to life. We're like Dr. Frankenstein here. It's alive! Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! Only it's not right now. But we are robbing parts, just like Frankenstein, right? I need to watch that movie, even though Halloween's over. Cool! Well, now we know where that screw come from. Now we just need to put this all back together and remember why it's broken and label it. And uh, put a note to find a spring. I might have a spring like that later. I bet we can reuse that. I'm just gonna straighten that hook out. So I'm just gonna not straighten that hook out. 
unstraighten that hook out. Ooh. Good enough. Should have put it on there the right way. Tech tip, use a screwdriver to uh, hook springs. Just kidding, doesn't work. Well, we're using a pliers because it's just a baby. He just a little guy. He just a little guy. Ow! No blood yet. Even had to dig in the Nancy cabinet for a while. Knock on wood. Look at that. Can you guys see those? So how the uh, mechanical advance works is there's basically two sets of weights here. Kind of like a centrifugal clutch on a small engine, like a mini bike. The faster this thing spins, these weights go out. And that advances this shaft, which in turn advances your ignition. Same thing that your vacuum advance does, but uh, as you punch it, you lose vacuum, so it doesn't advance it. And when you have vacuum, it advances it. I don't know. It's That one does it by vacuum, basically mechanically by vacuum. This one does it mechanically by centrifugal force. The fast, how fast that it's spinning. I'm a terrible explainer. All right, let's put a little grease on this shaft. Just kidding, we're slamming it back together. What is hold? what is, is that hardened? Oh no, there's a, shoot. Is that something that's supposed to be in there to push that grease onto that shaft? At the end of that cup? What a great learning day with Morski we got going on here. Well, how about that? So it looks like you got your cup with your cap. And then it's got this spring that sits inside of it. And then it's got another cup on the inside that rides against the distributor shaft. I don't know how that works. I suppose it just, that way only so much grease can get in there. But we'll clean that up and put that back in there as well. Wish we had a peasant to clean all this stuff up for us. If anybody's looking to be uh, the Mortsky parts cleaning punk, hit us up. There's always crap jobs to do around here. What am I talking about? All of our jobs are crap around here. Duff's, you got it made be in management. This is why I don't restore anything, because you I could spend literally a day going through this distributor. Literally a day, and that's without putting any new parts in it. Just cleaning it up. You know, if you start putting bushings in it, and new springs, and putting it on our machine, and buzzing it up, we ain't doing it. Ain't, ain't fixing nothing around here. We gotta clean this up a little bit since we got it apart. Goodness gracious. What is all that? Just old petrified grease. Oh, there's a little drain hole in the bottom even. Hee hoo! It's the glory hole. So, I take back my previous statement. Multiple glory holes. That uh, this thing was run without grease because there's plenty of grease in here. It was uh, that he used the wrong screw. So are those points like brand new? Did he literally swap points and kill this thing? Pretty much. Look at those points. Like they hardly ever even made contact. <sighs> For dumb. The guy should have known when he changed points that his car didn't run that maybe I screwed something up in the points. Like when I lost the screw and decided to just grab one off the dash and put in there. So there's your tech tip of the day. If you lose your point screw, find it, and if you can't find it, find the right one, not some random self-tapper. All right, rant over. One screw. Guy literally screwed the engine up. Ha <laughs> ha! How do you like that for stupid dad jokes? Screwed it up. God. I should be a comedian.
since we got it here, let's pull this screw out for the points on this thing. Let's see if we can find the right one to put in that distributor. Yeah, look at that. Little short guy, which this one now is, although it was previously significantly longer. And it's also a machine screw. And uh, he ran a self tapper in there. Tell you what. So I'm gonna see what I got in my stash. All right, so I couldn't find a screw short enough, kind of like the previous owner, Lloyd. Did find one of the right threads. Went to go thread it into the top plate, bottom plate, whatever you wanna call it. And uh, since he used this big oversized screw, it's all schlopped out. So I think what we're gonna do is I got the next size bigger screw and we're gonna just tap this in there and uh, then we're gonna shorten it up. How about that? Never throw nothing away. You need bumper bolts, you need lag screws, countersunk screws, pressed tin nuts, machine screws, self tappers, miscellaneous small nuts, more self tappers, license plate screws, carburetor floats, license plate screws, and yeah, you get it. I got drawers of this stuff because it comes in handy. What is that? I don't know. It's metric though. I'm gonna go uh, tap that and uh, shorten said screw up if I lost it. Didn't, did I not lose it? No, it's still there. All right, got this trash back together. I stole the points out of the stripped off gear one, which I also put the gear back on, so it's all in one piece. And put those in here. Stole the best rotor. I'm guessing that one came off of there too. But yeah, we're ready to stab this thing in. First, we gotta find top dead center for number one. I guess we'll just uh, pull the number one spark plug out. Just that easy. And then crank it over till you got compression. I swear I'm gonna paint this switch orange. All right. Well, if you got no compression, then what do you do? I guess we go to number two. Let's see if we get compression on that one. Come on. Jesus Christ. Oh. Guess he didn't put new plugs in when he did points. They're pretty sooty. Is there compression on two? Yep. So now we're just gonna drop the distributor in so that the rotor's pointing at number two instead of pointing at number one. Pretty easy, right? Self-explanatory? You guys get it. Grab the old super scraper and clean that mounting surface off for it to put it back together. Is that where the casting numbers are at on these? I think they are. Not casting, stamping. Sure enough, right there. I don't know if they mean in a six over though. Or do I really care? But if you care, this one is F0803A. So we got our point at number two. Looks like we're gonna have to turn the oil pump shaft down there a bit. So the reason I'm turning the oil pump shaft is because that's driven off of this flat drive down at the bottom here. And in order to get this point at number two, that flat has to be pointing the right way. Close. You turn a little bit more. Oh, there we go. I think. I think. Before we even worry about it, let's clamp this thing down and turn the engine over and see if that actually turns. That's going to tell us a lot. Well, the moment of truth, let's see if the gears will actually turn this thing or if we're just about to ruin another distributor gear. I think we'll be okay. Let's uh, snug her up, put everything back together.
Now, hook that wire to there. The other end of the positive. We should get some sparky spark. Well, if this wire was hooked up to crank it over, that would help. Here we go. No sparky spark. How does we flick those points? Hopefully not electrocute myself. There we go. Just gotta give it a flick. Oh, what the heck? just flew off oh dang it so the old Mortsky flick on these American made points I knocked the contact off of one of them so I guess we're gonna be putting points in for the first time probably ever on a video well we have done it before oh dang it I was so excited for these newish points hopefully we got some on the shelf well, digging through my stash, looks like I got a DR2227 PT. There it is, right there. Standard. I think the uh, T is the uh, economy version. And these don't say they're a country of origin, so one can only assume. Hincho and Mexico. They're going to have to do, though. I gotta go get cleaned up because it's Thanksgiving, so I'm expected at dinner, I presume. So, to resume after the holiday ham. Well, it's trash day, and this thing's gonna fire right up once we get those points in and address everything else that we come across. I'm sure it'll be just fine. So, let's clean all the crap out of here so we get some empty trash cans for the rest of the week. Spare coil. PAO, what's that mean? Pad? Ball? Paid for? We'll never know. We're saving it though, because they're always freaking missing. You don't suppose that he uh, put this on this car after putting points in, and it didn't run after that, and then he tried to coil. I bet he did. Oh. Even standard points, the ones we put in there. Made in USA. These are the ones we took out. Wait. Wait. They're new even. No. He put the used ones in the plastic bag even. Son of a biscuit. We tried. Dang it. This goes to show you that standard parts used to be good. I was going to save that wood handled screwdriver, but... Gotta get all this off the dash of that neck breaking horsepower. The old inline's gonna throw it all over our lap. I think we're gonna need another trash can there, Duff. Son of a biscuit. Trash can number two. Had to borrow more, man's. We ain't seen him for a while. He's doing okay. He was like uh, five degrees above yesterday morning, so cold mower riding season. It's most of the front, other than a stinky, dirty dog. Trash cans pretty much full from that carpet. Is this the new wiper or the old one they took off? Freaking new one. Score. I wonder if we can take that back seat out and uh, get into the trunk. I don't really feel like it. Probably should though. Freaking slice. Man, I haven't had that forever. Mandarin orange. 
I don't know, slice is caffeine free. So this is just a tire. There's another one back there on a rim. Garden hose, base of a jack, an ax handle. Be a hammer so it's at least useful. And an ax. Oh, pickaxe nonetheless. Dang it. Got a good handle on it though. What's in that pail? More carpentry tools? Duff, go in there and snag that up. Well, if we could just reach that latch for the lock. Need one of them skinny little kids from uh, the muffin video. A real long flat screwdriver. I don't think there's any way I'm fitting through that gap. If I do, I don't know that I'll get back out. We should try it anyway, just for entertainment value. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna fit in that. Guide me, Cyclops. I'm not gonna fit through that, am I? Nope. Not gonna go. What if we taped a screwdriver to something really long? What do we got that'll fit back there? Oh, we got a cane! Just kidding, we had a cane. We set it out at the curb. Dang it. Well, we saved this. I don't know what it's for. I say it's a cattle branding rod, but it's probably not. Tested it for length. It's the length of the deck lid, so we should be good. So I'm gonna crawl underneath there, and it's just a flat slot on the back side of this. Hopefully I can hit that, turn it, boop. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Oh, he's too big a screwdriver. Dang it. Scratch that idea. Hmm. The screwdriver's too big and it just wants to spin on the rod. So, back to the drawing board. Well, after getting a hold of the khaki bandit himself, Mr. Uh, Ryan at Iowa Classic Cars, he said this is how you get the trunks open. He says you can't fit through there. Even he can't fit, much less my chubby self. So, he said these lock cylinders are like 12 bucks with keys. First cut is the deepest. That's not even how that song goes, is it? Got it. Didn't maybe scratch the paint a little bit, which is good. He is ready for the bounties of our score. Oh my gosh. What do we got? Nothing good. Toilet plunger, five gallon bucket lid. A wheel that I don't even know if it's this car. Doesn't hold air. 15 though. Spare 14 inch tire, propane bottle. Where's that flag I was talking about? With some fancy, when you clamp it to a 55 gallon barrel? Kinda looks like it. Empty paint can, oh! Flat wood handled screwdriver with a metal end so you can bash on it. Valve adjuster. Antifreeze back when it came in. Metal gallon cans, empty. No hubcaps. That's what we wanted to find is the frickin' hubcaps. Yeah, this guy is definitely a carpenter. And that's why they get so rotten in the quarter panels. Everything just kind of drops in that little crack down there. There's the rotor bit set, empty. There's the drill he replaced. DJK. That wasn't even the guy's initials. He must have stole that drill. But uh, I'm guessing the Milwaukee one replaced that. Bathtub. More wood handled screwdrivers. Can't beat on that end though. Swedish nut lathe. Missing pieces. Keyhole saw. Nope, saw blade saw. Oh, be American made. Be something good. CTs. Challenger by Proto, not bad. Scraper, it's no super scraper. Another screwdriver, wood handle, of course. 
Yep. Nothing real exciting back here. There's a garden hose I was talking about. Actually need a short chunk of garden hose for another project. Good call. Fiber blade? With the arm? Nope, just the blade. Well, that was kind of a flop. Better luck next time. You never know. I'm gonna find that 30-30 lever action one of these times. There's some sweet revolver. All right, so it's now time to get it running. Those points that were inside of the car, they looked all right. So we're sticking those in. We're saving our new ones for, I don't know, something better. I was gonna say for a rainy day, but with the weather the way it is, we're not gonna have rain for a while. Now are we going to have spark? Good spark. All right. Put our plugs back in. We'll put some oil in the cylinders that are down. And put our plug wires back on. Get our air cleaner off. Give her a little shot of hot sauce. See what happens. How's the debacle? Having to swap distributors and points and everything else. But I think she's going to go. I didn't even notice this one's a hybrid model too. That's a big old block heater. All right, hot sauce time. Sure enough, leaking past the throttle shaft already. Every one of these one barrels always freaking worn out in the throttle shafts. That should be enough. The throttle linkage on these six cylinders always Amazes me how it even works. Make sure it's not. Oh, yeah, she's loose. All right. What are the odds this thing fires up? We know it's not going to run on six right away because number one is pretty low on compression. All right. Slingshot engaged. Slingshot engaged. <laughs> sure, our timing's off. Imagine that. Chokey choke, maybe. We gotta check our timing again. Just kidding, I don't know why it's not doing anything. The coil's not hooked up. Idiot! Idiot! I don't know what's making noise. It's all compression. Because there's no ignition. Here we go. I feel a lot better about it now that we have the ignition wire hooked up. That was dumb. <laughs> Now that we surely have it flooded. All kinds of spark there. Is there just one cylinder with compression? Um. So these things do have a fiber gear on the timing, and I'm actually surprised that didn't fail before the distributor and or cam gear. So I wonder if maybe that didn't get some damage and caused our valve train timing to be off. We should do some digging. I don't know why it's just getting one big bang off of one single cylinder. That's weird. We know the valves are moving back here, so if they're moving back there, you gotta be moving up here because it all gets driven, so I mean, we should have at least four of the cylinders that the valve train's moving. And we know it's moving midway because that's where our distributor's at. So the camshaft shouldn't be broken. So, what's the issue? So, can you see that little indicator down there? That's how you time a 235. So let's see if we can get that to top dead center. 
and that'll tell us where number one's at. And then we'll check the uh, distributor cap again. Man, that turns way too fast. That looks like a mark, don't it? Hmm. Well, I can't find that mark. And it's a pain to turn that over and look and try to see. It's a really small mark that's in there. So I'm just gonna pull the valve cover and we'll bump it off until we see that the intake's opening on number one. And then when it comes all the way to the top, it's gonna close. And it's gonna go back. I don't know. We're, we're gonna find it that way. You know what I mean. I'll explain it when I think about it. How sludgy is it going to be behind door number three? I seem worse. So what's going to be happening here? So this is number one. Here's where the intake comes in. So this is our intake valve. This is our exhaust valve. And there's why we don't have any compression. Because that exhaust valve is stuck. So we'll snap that off here in a second. Well. But what we want to do is wait till number one intake opens and as the piston is going down it's going to draw in fuel and air. As the piston gets to the bottom that valve is going to close, piston is going to come all the way up, boom, spark, piston goes back down from the spark. As it's coming back up, exhaust opens, pushes exhaust out. So we want to go to just after the intake opens so we know the piston's going down and then we'll pull this spark plug, follow the piston until it's at the very top and that's when we know that the rotor has to be pointing at number one and we also got to get that exhaust valve loose and I'm sure there's probably some other ones that are stuck yeah we haven't dealt with a stuck valve in a while and that's all right is this guy getting pushed open yeah he ain't stuck and then we'll also know since the intake's going down that's when we can work with that exhaust valve because we know that both valves aren't going to be open at the same time So now it's on the exhaust stroke that's pushing the exhaust, so the piston is coming up right now for the exhaust stroke. Well, the key is on inside of the car. That's why it was popping and farting. Duff, turn the key on, so we got power up here. Now hopefully we don't have spark. Still have spark. Something's getting backfed. Oh, it's feeding through the solenoid here. So the solenoid down here, when you got power to the purple, which is where we're hooking our loser switch up to, on these, you've also got power going to this green wire, which powers up the coil. So when I push the loser switch, I'm getting power to the coil. So that's why it's sparking when it's cranking over. But as soon as I let off that, we don't have power. We shouldn't anyway, because the key was off in the car. Yep, no power. So I could unhook this green wire, and then it wouldn't happen, but it shouldn't be a problem since it's clearly not running anyway. Now back to the valve debacle. We're waiting for the intake to open. Then we know the piston's going down as it's coming back up. All right. It's pushing the intake down. Try to get that valve loose. There we go. Let's pull the spark plug out. Duff literally climbed into the trunk. Did you find anything back there? I just watched him come through that. Hole in the back seat. What a goofy dog. Alright, we got our spark plug out. Now let's wait till we get the piston all the way to the top. I'm gonna turn it by hand. Oh, 
But I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark on the flywheel so we know where TDC is at. So we don't forget. So that way the next guy knows it was super tuned by Mortsky. And I'm going to mark where number one is at on the shooter cap. Doing with a black marker because I hate obnoxious orange marks. Kind of like red plug wires and craggers and flexi hoses and side pipes and glass packs and billet wheels and air shocks. Looks like our timing is off just a hair, so I'm going to turn that distributor so. Alright, timing should be really close on the ignition. Looks like it's fine up here. It'll certainly help if that valve stays moving. Spark plugs look like she was burning some oil. Alright, let's uh, well, we know it's going to have spark while we're cranking. Cause it is. Let's watch these valves, make sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. Looks like we freed that one up. I want the rest of them. Everybody looks good. Here we go. Slingshot, engage. Well. We probably should hook this up just for just to make sure we got power to the points. Oh boy, we're getting magic smoke on the coil. Why is that? Why are you smoking? Huh? Probably because that wire is way too small. Fixed it. I don't know why that decided to get hot, and it wasn't hot before, but like I said, the wire was really small diameter, a gauge, and it was about half torn through, so there's about six strands holding it, so we should be getting plenty of power from our 14 gauge wire we sent up there. All right, let's see what happens now. <laughs> Close. She's close duffers. Dang it, we're so close. Woohoo! She's going, those plugs, they are loaded up with fuel and carbon and everything else. timing that's off or just restricted or what she's gonna go though I think we gotta take a break, put a battery in it. Some those plugs just look horrible. Let's see if we can find some spark plugs. And maybe the exhaust is plugged full of crap. Oh yeah, we're uh, getting a little rust out of there. So I mean it's getting some compression back to there. I don't know, is that what you call it? Ooh, the mouse house really shot over here, didn't it, Duff? Good stuff.
Dug through my spark plug wire making kit. Had to put a new end on the number six plug wire because that decided to do snap off on us. I don't know what they call that, the ferrule. Anyway, instead of digging up a different plug wire or robbing something from something else, robbing Peter to pay Paul, figured we would just uh, crimp a new end on. Good to go. Well, let's see if she lights off. Did not have six matching spark plugs so we got two champion j8c's in the back and four ngk br six s's up front it'll be fine so we have any better luck this time oh and we also gave the battery a little juice boost <laughs> Responsive. Is it the timing? Hmm. Longest we had it running thus far, though. I'm gonna play that timing a bit. We might play with it a lot, even. Who knows? Let's see what that does. Probably didn't do anything good. I think it sounds better. You can see as I'm revving it, watch the distributor rotate. That's the weird vacuum advanced stuff that GM did on these. I think she'll go. I think it's all in the timing. We might have to play with it a little bit more. But let's hook up a fuel source to it. What do you think? Ready to go for a ride? A ride? We got to uh, check brakes. Why don't we do that quick? Oh yeah, definitely blowing some mouse house out of there. That might be some of the restriction. Yeah, right, no brakes. Uh, to the floor Tell you what I'll hook up the fuel system You'll hook up the fuel system and I'll do brakes. I'll do both gotcha. Okay, well you just hang out in there I'll let you know when I'm ready. Okay. Okay. I'll uh, I'll be a bit so you just go ahead and nap till then Rustiest one I've ever seen. I think that goes to the uh, Rambler. Oh my word, I've never seen anything so chewy inside of a master cylinder. Oh, who's this? It's got the mask pulled down. Still got the pajamas. Going to get them Black Friday deals though. <coughs> yeah. Mower man gets all the good deals, Duff. <coughs> yeah, you're a goof. You're a goof boy. All right, back to work. Back. <laughs> got our fuel tank in here. Duff did all that. Just got it grounded to the floor and then power wire running over to the fuse panel for the fuel pump because who knows if that one's going to work. And then I also made a new jumper wire from the solenoid up to the coil. That's about it. I was going to show you where I hooked up into the fuse panel. Don't be a hack. Use this trick. So you see all those spades on the left side? They got connectors on them. Like there's one there at the bottom left. That's open. And uh, it's probably got for a courtesy lamp. So I'm guessing it's got power all the time. But there's a spotlight one an accessory one up there on the left 
and you just put a speed clip on there and hook it up to that. You don't have to hack up your wire harness. Tech tip of the day, don't screw up your harness. Then you just unplug it when you're done. But does it work? I'm sure my rusty ground is just fine. It doesn't work, but fuel gauge works. So, do we not have power down there? Or does our ground suck? What could it be? Does it crank over? Oh, fired right up. So, keys on. We must not have a ground. You wanna check the ground? It's over on your side. Gosh, I even scratched it up a bit. I can't imagine this Chineseium pump is no good. Now let's do some checking. Jumper wire didn't fix it. Ground. Yep. So we don't have power, but we just have a bad pump. Well. Bad pump. Awesome. I think somebody sent me that. Was that you, Mr. Minnesota man, who gets mad when I make fun of the blue platers? Oh well. Yeah, I think a viewer sent me that one. It's no good. All right, the hepatitis pump's working, so we need to plumb that up. We need to figure out why it's not getting power from the fuse panel too. Power probe to the rescue. Put her on the spotlight. All right, so using the power probe, I found out that the backup lights only have power when the key's on. Watch this. Perfect. I wonder if it's really got a full tank of fuel. 17 year old bad fuel you let's plumb that thing in maybe that pump wasn't bad i don't know yeah it was never mind we hooked it up to the power probe and it don't work how are you doing on brakes you gotta jack it up and get that wheel off start bleeding good pup he's down there i think he said the bleeder's a little rusty but he's working at it how's it going duff that good Oh, he's going to get the other side now. You got your uh, nub of a tail out of the fan? Let's see if it starts from the inside here. Ooh, shift linkages. Leaves a bit to be desired. This worker a bit. Ooh, there we go. We got third. We want to lube that up a bit. Fuel pump. Let's see if she starts from in the cab. Slingshot, engage. Where's the new choke knob? There it is. Let's see how it hooked up backwards? Is exhaust coming out? Oh no, he's got the choke the right way. We're getting fuel up there. She's dripping. What do you think, the accelerator pump dried up? Definitely. got enough oil pressure to turn the light off. Running on her own for the first time in 17 years. Leaking a little fuel. Something just mesmerizing or satisfying about Watching and listening to all these lifters. 
So this is how you adjust them. There's a screw in the top and a jam nut. You loosen that jam nut up and then adjust it in or out to get your adjustment. They make a fancy little tool for pushing on it and adjusting them as well. Because you got to adjust these when it's running, if you're supposed to anyway. And that's the way I always did it. Oh yeah, we're getting oil up here. Nothing wrong with a buzzing half dozen. Look at that, it ain't even smoking. Pretty quiet for a glass pack too. All right, before we get smoked out, we better do some breaks. Where did you get those done? Yeah, that's a look of shame. He didn't get them done. Probably have to put that valve cover back on too, eh? Man. Don't even need to give it any gas. Now watch, it won't start. How many miles? 61,212.1. Radio? Nope, that must have been why there was one in the back. They were gonna fix that. God, I love these things. Oh yeah, we gotta lube up that shift linkage. You like it, Duff? So here's all our shift linkage down here. Usually they get really sticky inside the column because there's really no good way to get grease in there. So a lot of times I like to pull the steering wheel off and spray grease down it because it's two tubes in there that gotta slide inside and out of each other, plus these go up and down and there's adjustments and if you don't keep them lubricated, that's why people end up with floor shifters because uh, they don't know anything about these and they ruin them. A little coil's good, a lot's better. We're running a little bit low there, Mr. Benoit. These are last can. It is. Dang it. Go back to the Zeppelin. Let's see if she's in a better now. I'm gonna go inside, work her back and forth a few times. You guys will see what's going on. Duh, it needs some adjustment. I don't know if we got time for that. I'll show you what the deal is here though. So this thing should sit about right here when you go in between the gates. So you kind of get it, here's first, reverse and first. And you feel that's where it should sit. So this should be in between your gates, neutral. So that's fine, it goes into first and reverse. But you gotta go up a little bit for it to go into the gate for second and third. And those, those should be right here, but it's not. You gotta go up and then back and down. So reverse and first is good, but I think the rod for uh, second and third needs to be probably shortened up a bit to get those gates to line up. It's gonna be just fine for what we're doing, but just wanted to explain to you what's going on here. For all you guys that love driving three on the trees. Or for those of you that don't, because yours isn't adjusted properly. And to adjust it, well yeah, you can see it's in neutral right now. And you just take this, what is it? 9 16 nut, 3 eighths, no, no, it's 5 16 half inch wrench. Slide that up a bit so that those gates all line up. You know what, let's adjust it. Let's do it right. This thing's so good so far, let's do her upright. So one would think, this linkage down here, the front one would be second, third. Nope, it's first and reverse. It's bass backwards. So we're gonna adjust, what is it, 9 16 Idiot, or maybe one's 9 16 Apparently this one's half inch, this one's 9 16 So, I'm gonna go get another wrench. Oh my goodness. So you know those gates should line up. Now if we pull this rod up here. There. So 
So you can see we moved, oh, probably a half inch right there. Well, let's try it. Ideally, somebody would be spraying in there as you ran them, but Duff can't shift, nor can he run a spray bottle. He's pretty amazing, but he can't do it all. I think we got her. So I ended up splitting the difference, only moving it down about a quarter inch from where it originally was. How's it look down there? Yeah, I know we should lube it up underneath. So look at how buttery smooth this is. First, second, third. Reverse, first, second, third, second, first. Reverse. Oh man. A well-adjusted and lubricated three-speed is probably the greatest shift in thing ever. Yep, I said it. Other than like a late model, five speed on the floor, three on the tree. Way good. Four speed floor shift. I don't care if it's a top loader or a side loader, it's never as good as these things. Fight me. Should probably put a valve cover on. But yeah. Oh yeah, we gotta do brakes. Freaking brakes. How's those brakes coming? Oh, you want me to pump the pedal? He still thinks something's living underneath this thing, which there probably is. Duff, the brakes uh, don't feel that great, but they slow the wheel down and the wheel doesn't stay locked up. I did put a nail going to the line to the rear, you know, so we can do burnouts and it's two less wheels that Duff had to bleed. So to bleed these, I just pulled the bleeders out, cleaned them up. I'd already filled the reservoir and of course no fluid run out. And then I used my syringe it's a veterinary syringe, I guess, and push fluid, push the air and fluid up to the top, both sides. Seems okay-ish. I mean, it's not good, but it's not bad. Very nice. Whoa, whoa, very nice. So, let's see if this thing drives. And Duff is over it, but watch this, we'll say the the word. I'll go for a ride. Oh, ears just parked up a little bit. Okay. I guess I'm gonna go without you. Eh, you know I wouldn't. I'm gonna throw my jacket on because it's a little breezy out. How much crap is gonna fly around in this thing? Gross. Alright, load up. <clears throat> Seat's almost as bad as the one in the last 60. We need a chip clip for that. Where was the, oh man, we threw away the freaking clip that was on that clothesline clip. That's the word. Raised, I don't know. Clothespin. That's the word, phrase. Way better. Clothespin. Does anybody have clothes out to dry anymore? Huh. We did a 1960. No, it won't start. Fuel pump, oil pressure light. Oh, the generator light don't come on. I wonder if that's charging. Fuel choke. What is that switch? Runs best with a little bit of choke. It's cold out. Is the transfusion gonna work? Let's fix the gas. Just kidding, there's no fix to that. Oh yeah. We're golden duff. Not as sloppy as the other 60 either. Does that thing have like 240,000 miles? It's got 244,000 miles because the odometer's working. He says, how many miles are on it? I said 44. He says, that's 244. That explains why she was kind of meandering down the road on us. Here we 
we stop? Kind of. Then they drag a little bit. Oh, this thing's like a sewing machine, quiet. I haven't even made it a block and I already like it. Fix the only mirror that we got. See how it kind of slows down abruptly? You know, like a manual does. We'll uh, let off the gas, see if you guys can notice what it does once it hits overdrive. Speedo's working. See how that one two shift is? Like it came off the showroom floor. I think you gotta let off slightly for it to shift. We're at about 28 now. Which is even good. What do you think, Doff? Is the 60 a keeper? Yeah, I don't think so either. Oh, we've got two 60 Impalas and a 60 Ford. 
Oh, he just needs a 60 Fury or something. <laughs> well, that's awesome for Mopars in 1960. There's a horn work? No horn. Well, what are you doing? You're crazy. You're crazy, dog. You're crazy. All right, let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Go. See you later. Hasta luego. Duff. Where's Poppy? Where's Poppy? What are you doing? Hanging out with your buddy? Where's your buddy at? Poppy. Come here. Go get him. Go get him. Get him, Poppy. Just a brute. Are you so excited when your buddy comes to play? So excited. Get him. You guys up to no good? Just making all kinds of friends tonight. You brought Rover over here too? Rover must have escaped. Oh well. You gonna share your treats with him? Not so much. Well, this thing drives so good. Should we uh, see if we can't polish that paint out? Give her a quick wash and uh, get the buffer out, see what happens. At least try to get that and that matching. Cause I'm sure at one point they matched, maybe. Maybe he didn't care that the body guy did a terrible job of painting it. Yeah, I know what you want in it so you can sleep in it. Get to buffing, Duff. Dang, we didn't even need to do any of that putting pressure washing. Look at how much better I just scrubbed this half. I think if we did like some CLR to get rid of those rust spots, it'd be pretty good, huh, Duff? And even just scrubbing it, got those panels to match a whole heck of a lot better. Now I'm gonna dry it up a bit and we'll get the buffer out, see what happens. Yeah, just scrubbing it helped out a bunch. Back here, you can kind of see it had like that scuzzy tree slime dust caked into it. It's not quite as, I don't know why the hood's so rusty. I think it's cause all that stuff was repainted up there and this is good factory paint. Look at all the scratches and the fins from sliding everything in. How it doesn't carry over to the trunk cause the trunk was open. Good resting spot. You want to rest on that front seat, I know you do. Want to bet? Oh, he loves this thing. So we've got some Meguiar's 105 Ultra Cut. So this is the heavy stuff. This is the first step. And then as you get down to the light cut, that's more your polishing stuff. And then we got our heavy cut, I guess your whatever, rough cut pad. And this thing's just your Amazon cheapy champ power. Use it a couple times, works all right. I think we're gonna start on this fender. I kind of want to get rid of some of that rust in the hood first. I don't know. I really don't know what I'm doing here. I wish that hood would sit lower too. I'm not really into the whole cowl induction look. Ugh, and how do these get bent? What the frick? Yeah, Duff's like, what's up with that? I'm just going to wing it. I'm going to put a little on the pad, smear it on here a little bit, and then flip her on and let her eat. Oh, I'll dry it up. Imagine that. We shake it up first. This is why I don't have nice things. That's a lot. We can just smear that all over here. Let me do like half of the top of the fender right off the bat. And this is a random orbital. I don't know. DA. It spins, it makes noise. Freaking battery died midway. Look at how much shinier that is than this this and this one or two two or one so that's two times going over that and then wiping her down with our uh, cloth towel 
Also, ham and cheese is not as good as the ham sandwiches. But we're running out of sandwiches and uh, they're extinct now, so we're gonna save our dodo birds for special occasions. Like, when we get done buffing this. So it took about 15 minutes to do that little patch. So you can about imagine what it's gonna take to do the rest of the car. I'm not an expert at any of this. I'm sure I'm using the total wrong method and the wrong material and the wrong prep and the wrong grinder, buffer, sander, VA, orbital, whatever. But you gotta clean this thing once in a while and I'm probably not cleaning it right. This is how I clean them. If you guys know how to clean it better, let me know. I have a brush that's supposed to be for doing that, but I don't know how that's ever gonna work. But you gotta get the dead paint out of there. Oh man, this thing's looking way gooder. Too bad the other side's all smashed up. Look at that difference. Man. I wonder if we put like some linseed oil or something on the roof to give her a little bit of gloss. We ain't rich like Puddin's Fab Shop. We can't afford that uh, patiner sauce. I wish that fender over there or that whole side wasn't kind of wiped out, but I mean, the rockers still got, you know, rust on it. It is what it is. This car looks freaking good. I think if you took like some CLR or something, it'd clear up a little bit of that rust, but you put some wheels and tires on this thing and she'd look good from the outside. The inside is a crime scene, but this is why I don't do this stuff, because I get attached. Hmm. Also, this is like number four of uh, the ham and cheese, so we're halfway done-ish. So I'd, I'd call this a eight to 10 beer job. This just goes to show you, you can polish a turd. And if you can't polish it, you can roll it in glitter. A couple things I noticed on this, the, I mean, the paint quality on the hood, you know, like it's got all these dirt spots and stuff in it. It's, it's not, it's definitely been, the front clip's been repainted, replaced. When you're buffing this stuff, you gotta stay away from edges. I mean, that's, that's where paint's the thinnest and it's gonna burn through and you know, a hard spot like that, that's where you're gonna put all the pressure, rub through, but I mean, it's got some good patina. Some people hate that word, rusty, crappy, patina, you know, whatever, it is what it is. You get this car on the ground, you'll never see any of that stuff down there. I didn't get in behind like these door handles and stuff, like you almost gotta do that by hand or get a smaller buffer. I didn't do inside the white there. 
If you really wanted to get crazy, you could buff that, or you could scuff it and shoot it so it'd be nice glossy white, but then where do you quit? It's like, well, then you do the roof, you do the wheels, I might as well do rockers, and you do floors, and then polish the stainless. That's another thing. Like, you know, some of the spots that I hit with the stainless with the buffer look pretty dang good. And then you get these nooks and crannies. And then you get into window seals. Whatever. It is what it is. I mean, this car is really good. There's a thin spot kind of right there. I don't know if it's been touched up, but, like, you can see a little bit of gold there. And then, oh, that's just... Yeah, there's a thin spot there. We're kind of rubbed through. It's getting a little bit white. But up here, there's like all this white stuff. And I don't know if that's overspray from what he'd been doing before. But I can't get that to come out. So I don't know if a guy wet sanded that or what. And then the same with the top of the trunk. I think that's just from the sun beating down on it. I mean, obviously, the roof is gone. And then here, it's kind of getting white from being rubbed through. There again... You know, there's your body line. It's kind of rubbed through there, a thin spot. I did notice a little bit of rust back here that I didn't notice in the deck lid before. Again, it is what it is. I totally forgot to even buff that or scrub that, the dirt out of there. And the other thing is, you can see all these little dents and waves and stuff now that you got it all cleaned up, like hail damage, stuff like that. There's one there, one right there. One there, there, there. I mean, they're everywhere. So if you wanted a perfect car, you'd be there forever. But this color, man, that is good. Tasco turquoise. Pretty sure that's what it is, but it's, I dig it. And you go back over to here. Granted, this is the worst side for damage. Look at how dull and nasty and boring it is. I did get cleaned up a bit, but the shirt is definitely hurting. Look at all that stuff coming out of there. We're probably going to need, I mean, this pad's going to make it through this job, but we're going to need a new pad. We're going to burn through at least half of that bottle of stuff, Meguiar's. So you're going to have probably 40 bucks into the Meguiar's and that pad. We only used one shop towel. Probably could have used a couple more, but we use it right to the last drop, just like Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. And yeah, so I mean, 10 beers, you know, because we're halfway done with, you know, four beers. We got to wash this side yet. We're going to wash it, let it dry, and then knock this side out. I don't know how much of that will film. But you buy one of these buffers, I forget what the price was, like, I don't know, like 100 bucks ish. And you get yourself some rubbing compound, some pads, or whatever, cutting compound, and some cloths, chamois, microfiber towels. That's the word I'm looking for, microfiber. And uh, you pretty much transform a car. This thing is scary good. Some wheels and tires, and like I said, the outside would be great. I'm half tempted to pull this fender off and see. I mean, we're not going to get it great. But I think we could get that body line pretty good up around the headlight. That's scary. I don't know. But you got to find a fender in color, and you can't paint one because then if you paint it, you're never going to get it to match. And then you're knocking dents out down there, and then you're looking for stainless, and it just never freaking ends. And this door won't fit that great. I don't know what's going on down there. We're going to keep buffing her out. Right, Duff? And we're going to... Have a couple sandwich. Look at you even got some body work on you. Oh, it must have been from when I was petting you. But we're gonna do some thinking, see what we can come up with some for some wheels and tires. I wish I had all four of them caps, because then I would just throw those on. Maybe four matching wheels and tires. I think I got a couple of full-size caps that probably would have came on an impala. I have a classic car Ryan would know, but I think the Impalas had full size caps, and then the smaller caps would be on the Biscaynes and Bel Airs and stuff, which is weird because I don't know what these caps are for because those are not factory caps. Oh, look at this. We got a factory 58, 9, 60 cap. That's what a full cap would look like. I hate them, I don't really care for them, but they would make that car look a whole lot better if I had four of them. Duff checks it out, wiggles his tail. He approves. All right, we're uh, 
punching out for tonight. Might wash it before we punch out, but we're not gonna show you guys that. Go over to Puddin's Fab Shop if you wanna see washing. Duff says, buffing is boring. She's pretty good. We buffed real hard on that fender, but we couldn't buff the dent out. Yeah, I tried Duff, but it's pretty freaking good. You know, torn on this fender, I don't know if we can make it much better without making it worse and the time put into it. I'd rather put time into like, you know, brakes or a tune up or a fuel system wheels and tires which is next we gotta see what we can find in the stash for wheels and tires i think i'm just gonna put some betterish 14s on the factory wheels and see if i can round up some 14 inch wheel covers full size covers like that guy but maybe i can round up four dog dishes that'll look decent on here but i mean there's a lot of things you could do you could put torque thrusts on here you could just go with black steelies and some new lug nuts and some new dust caps. Or you could go with chrome reverses. I mean, anything except Kregers and side pipes and air shocks and flexi hoses and butt connectors. None of those. Yeah, like even back here, the dents aren't even as noticeable anymore to me after polishing. And I think if you, you know, took that door panel off, you could, there's a pretty good one right here. I think you could get most of that out. This one is so close to the body line, I don't know, and then there's kind of one here. You could maybe get that one if you could get at it, but I think the wheelhouse is back there. So you'd have to maybe sneak something in from back there. And really, I wouldn't even worry about that until you found trim, which we don't have trim. Oh, speaking of trim, I did slide this guy over, and she's been slid over for quite some time. You can see the rust built up in there. And while you're looking for trim, find that trim too. Yeah, I mean, it came out pretty good. I'm trying to figure out what to do with the roof. If we do some, uh, like, linseed oil, boiled linseed oil, we don't have any of that. And I'm guessing the hardware store isn't going to be open tomorrow because it's Sunday. So, yeah, probably won't do anything with that. I know a million people are going to be like, clear coat it. So I had a 53 Ford that was a nice pickup. Had a Velari subframe, 49-inch, 305, 700R4, drove phenomenal rattle trap but got like 24 25 miles a gallon but they clear coated it and they didn't do any prep work when they clear coated it if you don't do the prep work like the clear is going to lift in all these corners so it's basically like doing a full paint job and if i'm going to go through all that work you know pull the glass take the trim off sand all the edges you gotta do your jams do all that i'm gonna paint it i mean it might not be glossy but i'm gonna paint it a color because that pickup, like in spots like this, you know, this tub and tile would lift and then water would get under the clear coat and the clear coat would lift. Or on these door edges, the clear coat would lift. On the hood edges, or the hood edges, clear coat would lift. I mean, it just, everywhere, it lifted. And then what do you do once it starts lifting? You, what do you do, sand it smooth and try to touch it up? No. So clear coat, not the answer. Like. If you want to put some wax on it and polish it, but I mean, just the way the water beads up on this after polishing that side, and then I wash this side, the water just beads up on the opposite, you know, the side that we already did. And you actually see a bunch of water spots from when I left them last night. And that's the other reason I don't like nice paint and stuff like that, because then you got all these water spots. And you worry about the dog jumping on it. And you worry about kids on bikes and birds flying overhead crapping on it. And you worry about bad weather. But whatever. This thing looks a million times better. I'm going to see what we can come up with for some wheels. And uh, I don't think we're kind of done with the outside here. Maybe just get a little bit cleaning on the inside. Call it good for now. So on this stuff, I just looked it up quick. This Chant Power uh, dual action buffer is about 70 bucks um it comes with a few pads but i bought this pad kit and cleaning kit and that was like another 40 bucks and then this mcguire's is kind of spendy 32 fluid ounce you can do several cars i think this is like 32 bucks or something like that so you know for about 150 bucks by the time you get 10 dollars worth of microfiber towels but you can do many cars with this i did burn up that one pad we started with so I had to get a new pad. And you're going to have that. You'll have that on these big jobs. 
And so here's the, uh, you know, the ratings of the pads. Yellow is your heaviest. Down to red is for your, you know, fine polishing at the end. Yellow's for, you know, oxidized paint and deep scratches, stuff like that. 105, like I said, that's pretty aggressive. And then I got some of this stuff. It's by PNS. Um, I think C10 Flipper is what he goes by on Instagram. He's got just a ton of C10 pickups that he either shortens or they're already, you know, factory short beds. And maybe he does some long beds too, but he, uh, he's what he, he mentioned using this stuff and I've used it. It actually works really well, but yeah, 30 bucks for that stuff. It's crazy. I'm sure this stuff is about the same. So it's pretty crazy that, you know, your buffer is only twice as much as your compound, but whatever. I definitely think that uh, it added $150 worth of value to this car. Duff <laughs> maybe does not agree. It's not a fun job, but it makes a big difference. It's worth it. So what do you guys think? Worth it? Not. Nah. All right, we're gonna see what we can find for some wheels. And maybe tires that all have black walls or white lines, one or the other. You don't like my new wheel of selection, Duff? I think these are like 67, 68 Bel Air hubcaps. Oh, now you're interested? Those are like one of my favorite hubcaps. I don't know. I just like the bow tie in them and then the way that they kind of got this dimple out here or in here, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. I do have four of them, but I don't know. I kind of like these ones too. I did find a 14 inch with the white wall on there. Of course, I didn't clean it up at all. We're done cleaning stuff. Did get the back seat put back in it. Uh, did not clean out the inside. Duff likes sleeping in there, so we don't want it to be too nice, do we, Duff? So yeah, I think it looks a heck of a lot better with four hubcaps. Do you approve, good sir? Yeah, I think it'll do. That'll do, pig. That'll do. That'll do, pig, that'll do. Not a bad car. So there you have it. We got a 1960 Chevrolet Impala four-door sedan back on the road after sitting for only 17 years. All because somebody put the wrong screw in when they replaced the points. So they had to swap in a distributor, swap in some used points off the dash, flood the front brakes, put a couple tires on it. That's about it. This thing was, this thing's good. Oh yeah, and a fuel tank, fuel system. So if you want this thing, want to do a brake job, fuel system, could be yours. More info down in the description. Also, check out the uh, Duff approved membership down below. We've been putting some behind the scenes stuff and there's some discounts on merch as well. Also, we got the Patreon account if you want to support the channel so we don't lose the shop. Appreciate it. Thanks very much for watching. Check out the other videos. And remember, it doesn't matter you get it done, as long as you're having fun. Oh, Chevys are so much fun. Well, you're going to get some food for the day? All right. I'm going to clean up this mess you made here off your back seat. You're welcome.